If Conan existed on Kryn, it would be in Nordmar. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the nation of Nordmar in the War of the Lance era. I'd like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel, and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate links. I'm referencing the Tales of the Lance box set and War of the Lance source book for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. Nordmar is filled with richly independent people. These cultures have thrived in this dense jungle, swampy moors, and vast grassland terrain when no one else could. So what about Nordmar makes it different from its neighboring islands or nation? It breeds a proud and defiant people who dwell in the land that the Salamnics refer to as the last stronghold of good in the north. But this tropical peninsula was not always as such. For thousands of years before the Cataclysm, the Kuishtalik, the largest Nordmarian tribe, dwelt on islands. They looked much like their northern plains barbarians of the Ergothian Empire, with dark skin, and more primitive tribal cultures. When the Cataclysm happened, the Kuishtalik called it the Rising, as the land rose from the sea and formed the peninsula we know of today. In the decades that followed, the tribes of the Kuishtalik continued warring and vying for resources and territory, while simultaneously warring with the new threat from the barbarians in the south that the waters of the northern Korean Ocean protected them from in the past. When the tribal wars raged, Salamnic explorers came to Nordmar, investigating the new land. As the jungles and native species of the islands spread at a rapid pace along this new mainland, the Kuishtalik learned admiration for the respectful and patient Salamniks. They ultimately aided them with the southern barbarian attacks, and from that point on, the Kuishtalik and Salamniks' relationship would strengthen, albeit with strain over the next two centuries. In 202, the two nations went to war and fought up into the Astavar Mountains, the war eventually ended amicably, and their trade in Salamnic habitation was accepted. The peninsula can be divided into three distinct regions, the north, the west, and the south. The north features thick tropical jungles. The floor is so lush one may never touch ground when passing through it. It hosts rugged coasts and deep valleys, all filled with exotic wildlife. The west hosts a vast open expanse of wastelands, the easterly winds strip the topsoil from the earth, keeping the northern storms at bay, but creating unforgiving sandy deserts. And the south features the great moors, with waters plunging 25 feet in some parts. Its leech-infested waters and muck-filled valleys are home to a wide variety of rare and exotic fruits. This region is a natural deterrent to explorers. Bounded on three sides by the northern Korean Ocean, Nordmar's humidity is matched only by its incredible heat. With its long summers, many of the ferns and trees never drop their leaves, except in the Saket jungle, where the trees do shed them to conserve water, creating an eerie and deadly appearance. The population is estimated at 264,000, with just under half of those as nomadic humans, another third civilized humans, and the rest a motley collection of lizard folk, draconians, ogres, and others. Nordmar was ill-prepared for the Red Dragon Army as it swept over the land decimating Salamnic strongholds, enslaving the population, and stealing its resources. The independent spirit of the Nordmarians was ignited, and all throughout the war, bands of the myriad tribal cultures hunted and killed as many dragons and draconians as they could find. After their king was killed in the first wave of the invasion, his son capitulated to the invaders largely for the sake of his people from his seat in North Keep. The horse lord in the south has continued fighting the invaders from their city in Wolfgar. A cult known as Soil Brood in the Saket jungle is said to be studying illnesses of animals and plants, but to what end is unknown, as are their alliances. Northkeep is the capital of Nordmar, controlled by the Kuishtalik tribe, at over 12,000 in number. It is a sprawling stone city perched high on sturdy pillars above the thick undergrowth. 
It features grand stone walkways and exotic gardens, all leading to the grand temples in the heart of the keep. Its architecture is mixed in influence. Joachim is the next largest city, at just under 6,000 population. It is a primary trading port in one of the largest cities on the East Coast. It's fortified due to its proximity to North Keep. It's run by the amiable Tapotlik tribe. Willock is the next largest town, with a population of over 4,000. This sister city to North Keep is home to the spiritual Kuichtalik, with many temples dedicated to the Earth Mother. It has been subjugated by an ogre priest of Tekesis, keeping its population in line. Pentar may not be the largest port town with under 4,000 residents, but it does host the most ships and the largest fishing fleet. Its floating marketplace is said to rival Palanthus markets. This town has accepted the Dragon Army's occupation in order to continue its lifestyle. Wolfgar is a fortified city with 2,000 residents. It's the home of the Khan of the Wastes and the nomadic Huizitlik tribe, who pay him tribute. At its center is a horseman arena, which acts much like the Minotaur Circus, allowing contests of legal and social disputes to be resolved. It is occupied and used as a blood sport arena in this era. Jotan and Ungar are villages of just over a thousand people. These ancient settlements are homes to the Netzalik tribe. They prefer isolationism and living in the old ways. The roads to them are overgrown and the towns are regularly raided for slaves by the dragon army. And finally, Jenison is a village of under a thousand, mainly composed of refugees from Valkenor. This shanty town is isolated by the Sakat jungle and the Great Moors. It was once a frequented port city, but the Zoknalik tribe refused to work with the Salamniks. Apart from those cities, there are other important sites, like the Emerald Peaks. It's the highest point running east to west and is the original isle of the tribal people of Nordmar. It's rumored a great dragon swallowed an ancient city and slumbers beneath Starseeker Peak, where the inhabitants continue to live. The Great Moors are just as thick with trees and foliage as the north, but its steaming waters inhibit travel for all but the Zoknalik tribe who thrive there, using its exotic fruits for medicine and alcohol. Mother's Promise is at the northernmost edge of the Sotket jungle. It is marked by an extraordinary tree at over 260 feet tall, estimated at 2,000 pounds and over 50 feet in diameter. Mother's Promise is a giant Sibo tree discovered less than a decade after the rising. It is seen as the source of all exotic life in Nordmar and a gift from the Earth Mother, Chislev. Lastly, the Saket jungle is a 50-mile-wide rainforest that spans over a hundred miles up the last coast, running into the Miramar waters. It is so dense and lush that no settlement can withstand it, and is believed to be inhabited by dangerous creatures and evil humanoids. But that is all I have to say about Nordmar in the War of the Lance era. Did you know about the exotic flora and fauna of Nordmar? Would you play a primitive barbarian-centered campaign therein? Leave a comment below. I'd like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, the darkness might conquer, but it could never extinguish hope. And though one candle may flicker and die, new candles would be lit from the old.